In a House admin hearing on April 27th, Congressman Greg Murphy raised the question of why anyone would oppose stricter voter ID laws, asserting that the only rationale for the opposition would be a desire to commit fraud. Take a look. Could you opine as to anybody why anybody would be against voter ID? Why, why, what is the rationale to say it's wrong? Again, I'm just trying to figure out what rationale other than wanting, uh, wantingly to commit fraud would there be for these things? I well, just, I, I... Beneath his bumbling argument lies a contemptuous attitude towards military families, minorities, the disenfranchised, young adults, and the poor. To illustrate the real-life implications of strict voter ID laws, let me share my personal experience of struggling to obtain the necessary documents to register to vote. After losing my documents during a move after the COVID-19 pandemic, I was left in a frustrating Catch-22 situation. The process of gathering the required documents, such as a state-issued ID, a social security card, and others, was arduous and time-consuming. It was only due to a temporary relaxation of rules during the state of emergency due to the COVID-19 pandemic that I was eventually able to obtain the necessary identification. However, countless Americans face similar barriers, and without adequate measures, they remain unable to participate in the democratic process. Murphy's approach to discussing voter ID laws is characterized by hypothetical questions and unsubstantiated claims, a tactic that evades responsibility and shows a lack of respect for his constituents. But that's just my personal experience, right? What about Americans at large? Luckily, climate change denier Hans von Spakovsky has some insight. Well, just, I, 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 I don't know. I'm not going to speak for folks who are against it, but, but I just do know that the evidence on this shows it does not keep, keep people from voting. And in fact, I think there's some evidence that actually enhances confidence. Well, that's an interesting take. But if we look at research that isn't completely made up on the spot, we see a very different picture. According to researchers with Project Vote, millions of Americans lack government-issued photo identification. Rates of identification ownership are highest among white individuals, while other ethnic groups disproportionately lack a necessary photo ID. Lower-income individuals are less likely to have photo ID, and young adults are less likely to have photo ID. What about his claim that I think there's some evidence that it actually enhances voter turnout? Well, once again, the real world disagrees. A 2014 GAO study found that strict photo ID laws disproportionately reduce voter turnout, with reductions in even larger amounts among registrants between the ages of 18 and 23 and among African American registrants. And that leads to the unsurprising fact that in North Carolina, where Murphy represents, only 20% of voters participated in the 2022 primaries. When 80% of your state isn't even voting, do we really need to be looking for ways to make people even less likely to vote? Murphy and other Republicans like him continue to perpetuate false claims. His refusal to engage in honest discussions reveals a lack of courage to defend his beliefs because he knows they are indefensible. One potential solution to address this issue is to expand the range of acceptable identification for voter registration. Accepting alternative forms of identification, such as military IDs and state employee IDs, in place of a state-issued driver's license, would promote inclusivity and ensure that more individuals can exercise their voting rights. By implementing such changes, we can work towards a system that respects the needs and challenges faced by marginalized communities. Congressman Greg Murphy's dismissive attitude towards voter rights is evident in his misguided arguments and refusal to acknowledge the challenges faced by those less privileged than himself. By amplifying our voices, advocating for fairer voting practices, and supporting candidates who champion inclusivity, we can build a stronger democracy that values the participation of all of its citizens. And the first step towards building a better, fairer, and stronger democracy is to vote. And it is crucial for us to be proactive in exercising and protecting our right to vote from people like him. If you haven't registered or are unsure of your registration status, visit vote.org to complete the process in just a few minutes. Our focus should be on increasing voter engagement rather than disenfranchising those who need our support and their voices heard the most.